Okay, welcome to a video looking at some of the key differences between perfect competition and contestable markets. We often find that students confuse these two market structures, so hopefully this next few minutes will help to cement your understanding of the key differences and you'll get better marks in the exam as a result. After the exams are finished, if you're walking down a street in Spain and you find that every bar and every nightclub pretty much looks the same, you could be forgiven for thinking that you're living in a world of perfect competition. Uh, however, we don't live in a world of perfect competition. We live in a world of product differentiation and therefore the extreme assumptions of perfect competition make this a highly unlikely market structure. So you might beg the question, why do we study it? Well, in a sense, it provides a theoretical um, point of comparison with, with the real world. And the real world is a market of fast moving consumer goods and services with challenger brands coming into the market the whole time, trying to upset the apple cart and uh, take away some of the super normal profits of businesses. Here are some good examples from 2018, business brands, new products, which are making uh, quite big strides in the UK. So what are the key differences between perfect competition and a contestable market? This one slide is the dominant slide in the presentation might be well, well worth having your vision notes handy to make sure we go through this together. So let's take a, a number of criteria there on the left hand side and then the next two columns make the comparison between perfect competition and a contestable market. In terms of the number of firms, well in perfect competition there are many firms, of course it's a very very low concentration ratio, no one firm has any significant share of the market. In a contestable market, there can be any number of suppliers. There could be a one, it could be a one firm industry, it could be a dominant firm monopoly and still be contestable. I know that sounds slightly counterintuitive, but actually it doesn't matter how many firms there are in a contestable market, as we'll see in a minute. What about the type of product? Well, in perfect competition, we assume the product is homogenous. Another word for that is standardized. In other words, the same. Each, each, each firm is producing very well, basically the same products. Apples are apples, pears are pears, etc. However, in contestable markets, one of the key features of competition is the differentiation, the uh, change in the packaging or the quality or the ingredients or the provenance of a, of a product is really important, key feature of non price competition. Are there entry barriers in this market? Well, no, not in perfect competition. They're assumed away, free entry and exit. And no, there are no entry barriers in a perfectly contestable market. What about the exit costs? Again, no exit costs in perfect competition. And again, if we assume no sunk costs, then there are no exit costs of any significance in a contestable market. So there's the points of similarity with perfect competition. Profits in the short term can be any level in any market structure. So both short term perfect competition and short-term contestable markets. Profits can be any level, depends on the level of demand, depends on market prices, depends on the level of short-term costs. In perfect competition, supernormal profits, abnormal profits, well, they are competed away to a normal profit, long-run equilibrium. The entry of new firms competes away profits to normal profit. Uh, in, not in contestable markets, well, profits can continue. Uh, in a sense, you can make a, uh, an abnormal return. However, if you're making a persistent supernormal profit and a rival firm outside the market thinks that it can come in and perhaps take away some of that profit, then there is the threat, the threat of some form of hit and run competition, easy access to the market to take away the profits. Now, what about economic efficiency? Well, in the long run, in perfect competition, yes, the entry of new firms drives the market price down to a level where price equals marginal cost, allocative efficiency, and price equals average cost, um, normal profit. So yes, the market is allocatively efficient. Uh, in a contestable market, well, the answer is it depends. It depends on the strength of the threat of competition as well as the actual competition in the market. Indeed, the threat of entry by a rival firm might be sufficient for an existing firm to keep their prices 
close to their competitive equilibrium and also to keep their profits down to, uh, to prevent the entry of new firms. Contestable markets are all around us. I make the case in my teaching that every market is contestable to some shape or uh, some degree. It depends on the nature of the market, it depends on how you define the market, and it depends on the nature of, of cost and the entry barriers and the exit costs in a particular sector. If you take the resale space at the moment, there are lots of firms now producing gluten-free products. In that sense, lots of new products entering that particular profitable space. Uh, I'm a particular fan of uh, sports drinks, nutrition drinks, and again, there's huge amounts of competition now in the market for protein drinks. Here's muscle milk, which of course contains no milk. Uh, one of my favourite examples at the moment, of course, is the battle for uh, casual dining, the battle for home delivered pizzas. Uh, you'd think that Domino's, the global brand, the ubiquitous brand, would have a dominant position. And of course, it is a hugely scaled business. But here we have Zoom Pizza, worth checking out their website, targeting urban pizza lovers with their mobile pizza oven lorries and vans. Contestable markets in action. Here's the analysis diagram, uh, two diagrams to finish with. Here's the perfect competition diagram. You'll need a double diagram side by side showing the market and the individual firm. And of course, this diagram shows the entry of new firms driving the price down towards cost. Just need a single diagram for contestable markets. The firm does have a downward sloping demand curve. That's one of the key differences. Uh, I tend to draw the demand curve as fairly price elastic because there'll be many substitutes in the market. The firm can profit maximise if it wants and produce a, a level of profit at price P1. However, the threat of competition might be sufficient for the firm to actually charge a much lower price where price equals average cost. Perhaps to deter the entry of new firms. Okay, hopefully that's made a difference. Hopefully you're now a little bit more uh, confident and familiar with the key differences between perfect competition and contestable markets. The really key thing in the exam, if you get a question on contestability and competition, unless you're told specifically to do it, is not to write about perfect competition. You need to be writing about monopolistic competition or contestable markets. Unless it says perfect competition, please don't go there. Thank you very much.